Hey, hope you're well, Rob here. This is my review of the GoPro Hero 8 Black. Now I've specifically used it for mountain bike videos. I've made well over 100 using the previous generation of GoPros, including the Hero 7 Black. I've got the Hero 8, so I wanna see what it's like, how it compares to the Hero 7, what this new HyperSmooth 2 stabilization is actually like. Do we actually need it? Is it worth it? What's the quality of the GoPro like? What's the image quality like? Do you need to upgrade? But let's take a look. So first up, I use my GoPro mounted to a chin mount of my full face bike helmet. You can use it on a chesty, but I find that if you're just mounting just the GoPro on itself without a gimbal, that you get a really nice perspective when you put it on a helmet. When you turn your head and look around, the camera follows you and it's a really nice immersive kind of view. Yeah. Now all these shots right now are recorded in super view in 4K and the hyper smooth is just on the lowest setting at the moment. Super view gives you a really, really nice wide angle. It gives you a really tall frame to look at, but you can't use any higher hyper smooth than just the standard low setting. And it's very similar to the GoPro Hero 7 hyper smooth, which is already really good. In a moment, we'll take a look at the high setting for hyper smooth. I'll show you how smooth that makes it, but there are some compromises when you turn that on. The image quality is really, really good, really nice and clear. This is just using the GoPro color profile and I'm really, really pleased with how it looks. The 100 megabit bit rate has been great. Uh, as soon as you start going into lower light areas like this, the HyperSmooth does blur up a little bit and it struggles, but most of the time it works out really, really good. And here we are just on my local trails. The lighting isn't fantastic, but the HyperSmooth is working really well. Audio is okay. We'll talk a little bit about audio in a moment, but the sharpness of the image, the overall clarity, the color, just looks really, really nice. It's a really nice tone straight out of the camera. The boost in the bitrate from the GoPro Hero 7, which had 70 megabits per second to this that has 100 is really, really appreciated. This is quite a difficult image for the GoPro to process. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of green. There's just a lot happening. And honestly, when you zoom in and you look at the file in 4K, it is really, really good. I'm so pleased with the image quality. Now just a bit about how to get the most out of this video. YouTube will compress it. Use Chrome as your browser. Make sure you select the 4K tab. That will give you the highest possible quality that you can. Hopefully you guys feel the same way as I do. It's a really, really good image. It's a little bit blown out through the tree area. There's no blue sky, it doesn't really help, but I'm really, really pleased with the overall look of this. So, so far all of the video has been in super view and it's also been in just the basic or the lowest hyper smooth mode. Now I really, really like this view. As I've said, it gives you the widest possible image. It essentially um, uses the whole sensor and kind of squishes the middle and extends the outsides. So it all fits into a 16 to nine frame. And I find that the most immersive view for mountain biking because you fit the bars in and you can see quite a lot of the trails and what's going on but when you start to use hyper smooth high you start to crop it down so let's compare this one which is regular super view and we'll do that same shot again but we'll use hyper smooth high so you lose the super view but i'm intrigued to see what it comes out like how much of the bike's bars I can keep in. Hopefully there's enough to keep it still immersive looking. So notice the shot is so smooth, there's no shake at all, but at the compromise of cropping in and we've lost quite a little bit of the view. Just once more super view with hyper smooth on low and then hyper smooth on high cropped in a little. So we're on hyper smooth high still. So there's three modes of hyper smooth. There's just regular hyper smooth, hyper smooth high, which is the mode we're in now, and hyper smooth boost.
And just for the purposes of the video, I'm not using boost because for mountain bike stuff, it just zooms in too much. And I just don't think it is a good view. I'm intrigued to find out, like I know the stabilization of hyper smooth high is gonna be really good. But what I don't want to do is sacrifice too much of the view because when you're mountain biking, it's nice to be able to see as much of the trail as you can, get a real nice tall view. It's really nice and wide. I love the super view. It's my favorite view. So let's do a couple of little drops, nothing massive, regular bike trail stuff. Ooh. Uh, there's another little drop here we'll do. Sometimes when you flatten out and smooth things too much, you lose that immersiveness. Sometimes you want it shaky. You imagine films like Saving Private Ryan when, you know, a bomb goes off and the, uh, the screen moves around, the camera jiggles a bit. That can add immersion into a shot. So sometimes you don't want it so smooth it removes all of that be intrigued to see how smooth it made it and it's really really good there's no movement at all in any of the jumps that I did or the drops it was just totally steady all throughout but now I'm back to hyper smooth one hyper smooth low or standard hyper smooth but with super view and we should have a much taller view now and a wider a wider looking view so you should see a little bit more We'll do that little drop just there and you'll probably get a little bit of shake. Yeah, probably get a bit of shake on there because it's quite heavy landing. So as I've been watching these clips back, I've realized that hyper smooth on high not even on boost but just on the middle setting on high like we're seeing here it is just totally steady there's no movement no shake the image is a little bit softer it's cropped in so it's not using the full resolution that you would get when you're on the widest setting but if you want a really really steady smooth image hyper smooth high is going to give it to you I'm just not sure that I like it as much. I think I'm a little bit too close to the bars. I can't see as much of the trail. Yeah, I could play around with the camera angle a little bit on the helmet, but I'd still be losing a fair amount of image because we're cropped in to make it super steady. In addition to that, I'm not 100% sure I want my image so steady. I do like the bumps and the movement and I think when you're watching it back it starts to add a little bit more realism into the shot so are we at a point where hyper smooth is too smooth for me yeah I will take the hyper smooth low over this hyper smooth high or boost and yeah it does actually introduce a bit of shake but as you can see from these clips it is not that bad and I really like the wide view a little bit of shake I can take So just about the audio, it is good. It's not brilliant. It's not as good as the GoPro Hero 4 still. The wind is okay. It does a good job in some situations, but in others, depending on which direction the wind's blowing in, it's not great. But I'm just gonna shut up now so you can listen to the audio from the GoPro Hero 8. That is slippy. So there you go. GoPro Hero 8 for mountain bike or point of view footage. Is it worth the upgrade? Well, the image quality is really, really good. I don't really care so much for the new hyper smooth boost. It just crops in too much. You lose that really nice super view, really, really wide angle audio. It's a little bit better actually, but I still think I'm gonna need to put 
some little wind mufflers or a little sponge around it just to stop that kind of noise that you could hear. Really, really like the new case. I think it's a really good idea. It's much, much easier to change the battery. And when you're out in the field and you need to do it quickly, it just makes all the difference. So if you've got a Hero 7, I would say, unless you really, really want extra hyper smooth, extra stability, it's probably not worth the upgrade, but if you've got any of the previous GoPros, then yeah, it's going to be worth the upgrade. Um, it's pretty much the same kind of hardware as the prior generation, so not a huge amount has changed internally. Most of the changes have been on the actual software, extra smoothness, extra hyper smooth and all that good stuff. Still, it's a really, really neat little camera. I'll be keeping this one. Just to add, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that I did post, I had a little bug. Um, it's not appeared again, so I'm hoping it was just a one-off. It was where the HyperSmooth disabled itself when I was riding, but it's not happened again since then. All right, check out my GoPro tutorials because I've got a few on all my settings that I've used. Um, search on my channel, and if you like this stuff, subscribe, and I will catch up with you all soon.